Hey, hey, y'all, we got some real special for y'all this time around. So in our podcast intro, we always say that we're going to talk about the best and most memorable movies, music, and culture-changing events from our generation. But let's be real. It's mainly a movie podcast. What are we talking about? With a little bit of a sprinkle of music here and there. So... We are here today to fix that very problem. We are starting a brand new mini-series literally called The Mini Millennial Classics because we're creative like that. The Mini Millennial Classic series will be a reoccurring five-round draft where Burry and I will pick the best and most memorable blank of our generation. So, for example, let me tell you what we're thinking about. The best Pixar character of our generation. Or the most memorable one-hit wonder from our generation. Or even the best and most memorable passes from that backstabbing bum Tom Brady from our generation. Football is back, so I'm a little excited. Fuck you, Brady. Go, kid. We got it. We got it. I'm ready. I'm ready. And the cherry on top of all of this is at the end of the draft, at the end of our five picks, you guys will let you guys will get to pick the better team and decide which one of us is the better millennial. Right now, I think it's me. We're really excited about this because it's going to allow us to finally live up to our intro. And if this goes well, hopefully we can get to the place where you guys can pick the categories and then Burry and I could go back and forth, you know, drafting our most memorable and the best from our generation. Anyways, let me not get ahead of myself. The first draft will be the best and most memorable songs of the 2000s. Enjoy. What? I'm gonna steal the Declaration of Independence. Boom! Shakalaka! Turn up! Goodbye, Benny. Alright, so this is my pick with the number one pick. This is the song that I'm going to go with. The number one song. The number one millennial classic of the decade. Yes! Every time. This is, I think this is, it's gotta be the number one pick. I think this has got, you know, I was looking it up because I thought the song was way bigger than it actually, it was only number six, only peak number six on the billboard, but this song, my God. It's amazing. Oh. So you say, you say this is definitely a number one pick. This is my number one overall draft, number one pick. Yes. And it's really quite simple. The Carter Three is one of my favorite albums, but this song specifically is a song that it sticks in your head. I remember exactly where I was when I first heard it. There's some lines in this that just stick. And this is like quintessential. There's some songs that are like quintessential Kanye, quintessential Jay-Z. This is a quintessential Wayne. It's not like a pop song. It's not like he like pandered to do like a song with Katy Perry to, to chart yeah. or some shit like that. Nah. <laughs> this is just like Lil Wayne going hard, doing Lil Wayne. And it, it fucking peaked. So, favorite song. So I have to say this. I love this category just because there. if we're only doing top five, you cannot have an emotional reaction to any song picked by either of us, okay? Because every song, when you get to choose the top five, the top ten songs in an entire decade, everything is going to be a gem. And a milli is more than a gem. You feel it in your bones. You said this earlier last time, when you listen to the song, you could probably ask, out of every ten people you see outside, no matter where you are in the country, maybe even the world, out of every 10 people, at least half of them, at least five of them are going to know most, if not all, of the lyrics in the song. I love this song. I jammed to the song more than I can remember. My brother used to burn CDs. He played, put this song on every single CD he made from, the, from like the day it came out for, for like three years later. He used to burn CDs and make them for other people. I absolutely love the song. I can't disagree with you. Um, but I also knew, I also knew you were going to pick this. Um, you had the first pick of the draft. Uh, and I heard you talk about two songs. 
Um, uh, you talked about Ignition and you talked about A Melody. So I didn't pick both those songs because I knew oh, you No one's picking Ignition. Huh? I can just tell you right now, Ignition ain't making no one's draft, bro. It's disqualified. A remix? It's disqualified, bro. We can't, put R. Kelly, we can't put R. Kelly. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you got to separate the art from the artist. Actually, what's his face? Who's, who's, the, who's the alleged dude who's still getting Oscar noms, so... Um, Woody Allen still getting Woody Oscar Allen. Home, so yeah. So I guess we'll put ignition, but he can't be top. He can't be a top pick. He, he can't be my top. Pick. He he's not. But the ignition remix. Um, there was a legitimate fly out for that song to be, um, the national anthem of America. <laughs> <laughs> there was a legit like petition where thousands, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people signed it, saying we should make this the national anthem. You know. It's I think we song. would have beat ISIS way quicker if that was the national anthem. <laughs> All right, so let me go. Let me. Let me. Was sh- that to get? Was that to get Colin Kaepernick to stop dealing? <laughs> <laughs> the, the amount of pandering this country would do to just get off this black race thing, I wouldn't doubt it for a second. Let me play you the song I think is the number one pick, and I didn't. I, I wasn't even second guessing it. This is your. This is the number two pick. This is your first pick yeah this is my first round draft pick this is the number two pick um um and i just want you to understand that this song is an entire mood okay wait, let me make sure my volume this is happy from pharrell i'm, Get I'm the getting fuck up and i'm here. leaving oh i knew you were gonna figure out my name who's oh. pandering now hey oh my god where's your all lives matter sign Okay. Oh. <laughs> hey, you see, uh, you, gotta play, you gotta play the song. Gotta play the song. Gotta play the song. Here we go. But you gotta jump fast forward a bit. You can't fast forward greatness, okay? You gotta let my song rock. Let it ride, baby. It's an entire mood. Here we go, boys. Uh uh. Uh. Okay. Yes. Okay. Get it. Go, DJ. Okay. Yeah. This is this is this is on this this is on the same level. Everyone, you could you could tap anyone on the street, on the in the subway, in the boardroom, the fucking you could tap the Supreme Court and tell them what what's the lyrics of the song, and they we barely spit out. Everyone, this is a great pick. This is my favorite pick. So let me let me go through my mini diatribe over here because. God damn it, this song is special. And when I say special, it is special. So this is Lose Yourself by by the one and only Marshall Mathers, a.k.a. Eminem. And it was released- A.k.a. On- B-Rabbit. B-Rabbit, yes. And it was released October 28, 2002. It was written by Eminem. And if you did not know, this was Eminem's number one, first song to hit the number one charts of uh, the Billboard Hot, the Billboard Hot 100's number one. Um, and it was there for. 12 consecutive weeks and it was number one in 19 other countries outside of the US of A. All right. It's the very first song to win an Academy Award for best original song. Also won best rapper, best rap song as a Grammy. It was the best solo rap performance in 2004. Right. And this, by the way, it was the on the Rolling Stones 500 greatest songs of all time. And it was the highest uh, hip hop song on that list. 500 greatest songs of all time, Rolling Stones. It was 166, the number one hip hop song of that list. And that is just the awards, okay? That is just the background. That is just the, the, the fun and the goodies, right? It's a millennial classics. That's why I picked it. I mean, our podcast is the millennial classics. So the reason it feels, I feel the song. I love the song. This song is so good to me and every millennial out there is because this song, like I said, said in the beginning it's an entire mood when you're mad when you're angry when you're excited when you're hyped up and most definitely when you're pissed off you turn the song on and you get the feels you get the release you get the excitement you get everything that you want in a goddamn song you know the lyrics you understand the lyrics the beat is on fire Eminem is rapping like no one else and then I have to just end with my favorite line and this line was viral before viral became a thing palms are sweaty Knees weak, arms are heavy, vomit on my sweater already, mom spaghetti. Burry, is there a song that is better than this? I think not. I so respect I can, the I can tell you, actually, technically, there is a song that's better than this. 
a million because I was drafted it. <laughs> but but here's, here's the thing with this song. Uh-huh. It, 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 it is a way bigger song than a million. A million is a huge song, but this is like a colossus. This song's insane. Um, I mean, the movie was the first rated R movie I ever, ever watched. Uh, is that a millennial classic we're going to do, Burry? Oh, probably. Yes. But it's really not. It's just the final <laughs> rap battle on YouTube. The final rap battle on YouTube is the millennial classic, not the song. Uh, not the movie. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Uh, but uh, this song's huge. The only thing I have against this and this pick is it's like it's like picking the Avengers. You know? Like, cool mm-hmm. guy. It's a good, huge movie that everybody likes. It's it's a little obvious, you know. My Emily <laughs> pick, like, <laughs> like John Wick, <laughs> you know. Okay, okay. My Emily right, pick's like John Wick. It's a precision pick <clears throat> that really goes right at your heartstrings. This song, it has, it's it's such a part of a corporate machine that it, it almost is. It's not even emotional anymore, bro. I don't okay, know what first to say. Of all, First of all, you can go fuck yourself, number one. Number two, you can make all the excuses you want because my pick is better than yours. And most importantly, this is not a corporate song. If you did not know this because I was doing research for the song, in 2004 when he won the best solo performance, the VMAs, um, I think it was the VMAs or the MTV Awards, actually wanted someone else to do um, Lose Yourself instead of Eminem without the cuss words because they thought it was anti-corporate, number one. It became so big because the culture loved it. Yes. The rules okay. of the game... The culture? Is you mean the Midwest? Okay, I don't care what it is. The culture <laughs> is the culture is the culture. What I'm trying to say is the name of the game is Top Songs of the Decade. You didn't tell me if it was too popular or an underground pick or a gem. Fuck you. This is the greatest <laughs> song of the decade, and I will not second guess it. Lose Yourself is my number one pick. It is the number two pick overall in the draft, and that's how I'm going to leave it be.